So we're finally coming up on a year since the pocket cinema camera finally arrived after Blackmagic had announced it at the NAB show in 2013. And now that 2014's show has passed, it's still kind of in a class all its own. It still breaks the $1,000 price barrier, and it's still the smallest video camera to record at such a high bit rate, and even raw after Blackmagic came around with a firmware update. But the thing has always needed to get rigged out for doing serious work, kind of an inevitable compromise from the size and the audio inputs and the battery life and a whole host of other issues that people have had to contend with. So at focuspulling.com with the Blackmagic user group, I've seen a lot of amazing footage come through with advice from people who have found ways to make it work. And in the meantime, I think I've built up a rig that works for me, and I thought I'd take this chance, like the last commentary, to just talk over some images to tell you about some products that might work out for you. It might be best to start with an adage that's pretty timeless advice, saying you should probably spend more on your lens kit than on the camera itself. And that's not hard to do with the Blackmagic Pocket. And thinking back to the previous commentary, there's a Panasonic 12 to 35 millimeter continuous f2.8 zoom lens that uh, I found to be a real workhorse, especially when you're handheld because of the power OIS stabilization in the lens. But sure enough, it does cost even more than the camera. But that's just a one-size-fits-all traditional zoom lens. And what might inevitably happen is that your work evolves into calling for a kit of prime lenses, or even better, cinema prime lenses. At the moment, there's really just one company that seems to be answering that demand at the scale, at the level of someone like a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera user. And that company is Rokinon, who also go under the names Bauer or Samyang. And their cinema prime lenses basically have two distinguishing characteristics. First is that the aperture ring is declicked, meaning that as you turn it, it doesn't click and therefore jerk the light level from one to the next, but it's smooth. And the second is that the barrel is very wide with gear rings so that you could attach something like a follow focus device. So this is pretty well known stuff, but the thing that surprised me is that you actually don't want to get a cinema prime lens to match the mount of the camera you're using in the case of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, which is micro four thirds. And the reason is that the flange distance of the micro four thirds format requires that the lens extend out from the body farther than the better alternative, which is to get a Canon EF mount lens, which is really short. It goes right up to the lens mount because Canon bodies have the sensor far deeper inside because traditionally they weren't mirrorless. And as a result, if you get a Canon EF mount lens, there's some cool accessories that you can use in that flange extender. And one of them that I'm going to start with here is something called Holy Manta. There's any number of reasons why you might want to use an ND or neutral density filter, which is basically a sunglasses for your camera. The uh, trendy, definitely overdone reason these days is to have this hyper shallow depth of field or focus isolation in your shot. But traditionally, this sunglasses for your camera was located between the camera sensor and the lens. But the Blackmagic Pocket certainly doesn't have a built-in ND filter. Frankly, most cameras don't anymore. And what the Holy Manta does is it exploits that flange distance problem of the Canon EF mount and simply puts in the adapter space an ND filter hearkening back to the original placement of an ND filter between the sensor and the lens. This has a better effect than if you have it at the end of the lens barrel because out there you tend to get things like crosshairs and vignetting at the edges that are less prevalent or less of a risk when it's closer to the sensor. So the way the Holy Manta works is it exploits that spacer inherent in any adapter that goes from Canon EF mount lenses to a micro four thirds mount or only one millimeter different from that, a Sony Alpha NEX mount. And inside of this adapter, there is a slot for a cartridge that magnetically clicks into place. And this cartridge has a little thumb wheel that you can rotate 
to change the amount of light that's blocked. And this is like rotating a variable ND filter mounted at the end of a lens. And what's more, you can flip a switch that's attached to this thumb wheel to make the entire ND filter disappear. That is to say, it won't be any more between the sensor and the lens. And that's an ideal situation because there's inevitable compromises using an ND filter. It compromises the optical quality. And sometimes you want that without having to disassemble the entire operation for a lot of reasons. I tested out this product um, on a ranch shoot for a documentary I'm doing, and this was during the worst drought conditions in the Central Valley of California ever, I think, or at least in many years. And so the dust was crazy awful. And with that condition, it was awfully nice to not have to take off and on lenses and the ND filter um, just to deal with changes in requirements for a certain shot. So to be able to keep the ND filter protected from dust and without having to assemble and disassemble and change lenses with that sort of situation was invaluable. So it's certainly a cost-benefit ratio that you make because the Holy Manta ND is a rather expensive unit, but there's nothing else like it on the market in terms of the combination of the ability to put it in that sweet spot between the lens and the sensor, and also to be able to temporarily flip it away without disassembly. So the Holy Manta is ideal for a specific situation when you are adapting a Canon EF lens onto the Micro Four Thirds mount of a Blackmagic Pocket. But there will be situations when you simply want to attach a Micro Four Thirds lens itself onto the Blackmagic Pocket cinema camera body. And in that case, there isn't any room between the lens and the camera sensor to fit an ND filter. And so in that case, you just have to go the traditional route and screw it onto the end of the lens barrel. I've always used a variable ND filter for that, and the principle is the same as the one that's inside the cartridge of the Holy Manta, which is just a couple of polarizing filters rotating against each other to vary the amount of light that's allowed through. The product I've used in the past is by a company called Lightcraft Workshop, and just a couple of weeks ago, they came out with their next generation called the Rapid ND, and it adds a couple of cool features, especially at the 58 millimeter size, which matches the Panasonic lenses. There's a little lever on the outside of the rotating ring that's easy to get to and more precise to turn, but also they made it so small and so thin that the inner diameter of the filter and the outer diameter are the same, which is really rare in this product. So among other things, you can use the same lens cap you were using on the lens on the outside of the filter. So that's lenses and adapters and filters, but I guess the idea of rigging implies really adding bulk, adding mounting points, and in the case of this little thing, protecting it. There's a company called View Factor, a really cool indie company based here in the US. And they were first to market making a cage for the Blackmagic Pocket called the Continuo. And to this day, I think it's still your best option. They have really cool pricing and it looks cool. You can add a little wooden handle on the front. I've taken it all over the world. Here you can see it alongside the Great Wall of China on a pretty aggressive hike. It held up really well there and it has held up everywhere I've taken it. With all of those mounting holes, which is basically like a cheese plate, it's given a lot of options for me to mount things onto it. I also found that a couple of slots on either side of the cage added the ability that I didn't have with the original camera to put a quick release camera strap on. This one's by Tamrac. And what I did have to do though, is I had to file down the edges so that it wouldn't cut into the fabric of the strap. But once I had that, it was great because then I actually had a traditional camera strap that I really couldn't have rigged up on the camera bear. So it's practically legend by now the ways that the Blackmagic Pocket drives filmmakers nuts. And those circles of hell include battery life, viewfinder, audio. But as for the battery, there is one solution that worked at least for me. And it was to get a little battery sled by ICANN that is really just simply a piece of plastic with a couple of contacts and a little circuit board that takes the voltage from Sony and Canon batteries and raises it up to 12 volts for the larger Blackmagic cameras. Then you have to get another adapter to 
fit the pin size of the input on the Blackmagic Pocket. And even though it costs way more than you would think it should, um, it actually does the job, extends the battery life by quite a lot more than the measly 30 minutes you get out of those little Nikon batteries that go inside the camera itself. You can use both at the same time, so it's a nice backup in any case. As for the viewfinder, there have been a couple of accessories that try and deal with its problems, like not being able to see it well in daylight and the fact that it's so small. But about a month ago, Zacuto finally delivered a version of their Z Finder that uses a little plastic adapter ring that you just simply tape onto the back of the Blackmagic Pocket, and then the Z Finder snaps onto it. It's not like a Z Finder Pro, it's actually more like a Z Finder Junior, so it's not necessarily a bargain. They also skimped by not including the plate that comes with the Z Finder Pro to cover the widest open part of it, which can be a problem when you're using it with the lanyard that they include. They also, for some reason, didn't include a second adapter ring that they promised in the inventory list. But Zacuto has in the internal optics an anti-fog mechanism that no one else has been able to reproduce, so it's kind of a no-brainer. It's the thing to get if you wanted to improve the viewfinder on this product. Finally, with respect to audio, there's always been an attitude surrounding the pocket that it simply doesn't need to do it well but that tells you that it didn't do it well. But there are reasons why you might want to record in camera. It's just that the built-in microphones have really bad distortion and buzzing and uh, electronic interference noise. And then even the external input, um, the preamp on that just isn't very strong, and it also has poor signal-to-noise ratio. So there's good reason to invest in an outboard recorder that either records independently or at least prepares the signal in a better way for the internal recording of the pocket to record well. I went with this product called the Tascam DR60. It just fits right the form factor of the Blackmagic Pocket. Granted, it's not ergonomically fantastic because it just makes it into a two-story building, but it does prepare any XLR input by adding phantom power and delivering it to the inputs on the Blackmagic Pocket, or in any case, creating a um, outboard track that you can sync later. It even has a slate button so that you can synchronize them easier. So it's a great accessory because it attaches right onto the camera itself, or in this case, to the cage. And then to go with that, I attached via XLR cable a Rode NTG2 using a mount on top of the camera, and it all records exceptional audio, and in my case, I'm just using the DR40 as a preamp and not recording externally because I just don't want to deal with syncing later, and that's more than sufficient for documentary work. Although the DR60 runs on its own batteries, it goes through them pretty quickly, so a nice thing to pair with it is a mobile phone charger external battery pack that you can get anywhere. And if you just put a USB cable between that and the mini USB port on the DR60, you get a nice lithium rechargeable battery source that extends the battery life of the audio recorder. To tie all these cables down, there's a really cool little product by a company called Tether Tools. And this one's a jerk stopper in the style that has a 1 quarter 20 screw. And you just screw it into the side of the cage. And then what it does is it ties down a cable so that if you did accidentally pull on it, it would not risk damaging the ports on the camera itself. Wrapping up, I thought I'd mention one last gizmo that takes a Canon EF full-frame lens and adapts it down to the Blackmagic Pocket's sensor in a way that gathers more light and improves the crop factor. This is, of course, first made famous by an adapter from a company called Metabones, but it's not a patented technology. And there are other companies that have made them for a lot less because in the example of the lenses at the beginning of this video, if it's fully manual anyways, then all of these electronic controls are unnecessary and then it really comes down to optical quality. I was happy to save about $500 by getting this product instead of the Metabones and I found the optical quality to be more than sufficient, but it's something at least worth considering. So I guess that about wraps it up. But I hope you found at least some of this information useful. And I have put links to all of the products that I've mentioned in this video in the caption below. And I do welcome you to please join the user group and to continue the discussion there via the portal of focuspulling.com.